Our next presenter is Jim Culver. He's an associate professor at the EEOB department at Iowa State and director of the undergraduate biology department. You probably can use these. All right, so do I need a do I need a microphone, folks? I'm pretty loud, so probably it'll be all right. Uh, all right, so uh, first, thanks to Melissa and the organizers for inviting me to come visit with you today. I want to tell you about something that we call the Scarf River Navy. <coughs> Just a little bit more about me, so you know where I'm coming from. I'm actually from Iowa. I grew up in eastern Iowa, Cedar Rapids. Spent much of my youth along the Cedar River and Prairie Creek. Uh, I'm a graduate of Iowa State. Went to Wisconsin for my uh, master's and PhD, and then I was a biology professor at Colorado State University for a few years. And in 1988, I came back to Iowa State, so I'm just about to complete my 27th year here uh, at Iowa State as a biology uh, professor. How did I get interested in the South Scum River? Who can identify the species? Small. Smallmouth bats. There's no smallmouth bass in the Skunk River, none of you should go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and this one went right back in. That's probably the biggest one I've ever caught. That was about a 19-inch smallmouth, and I'll never tell you where it was I caught. But in any case, uh, that creature there is what got me interested in many respects in the river. Um, with regard to issues facing it, I don't really need to tell you this. You guys all know this. All right? That's why you're, you're here at this conference. There's a number of different kinds <coughs> of issues that face our rivers and streams here in Iowa. There have been a number of presentations and there'll be more that deal with some of these particular issues. The Skunk River Navy doesn't really, can't really do anything about those. Our interests are really at this level here. So we're interested in a little bit of biodiversity monitoring and we're interested in trash. So let me just say a little bit more about that. Uh, as a biologist, I'm, of course, very interested in biological diversity. I'm not a fan of limited biodiversity. Some of you may be familiar uh, with this work, which uh, was carried out here at Iowa State um, by John Downing and his colleagues. We have lost an incredible amount of diversity of freshwater mussels. Back in 1900, 55 species of mussels. By the late 1990s, only 28 left, half gone. Not extinct, extirpated from the state of Iowa. And of those 28, half of those, you can look it up, are on the Iowa DNR TNE list. So we're in here at risk of losing those as well. That's a huge loss of diversity. Trash? Do lazy boys belong in streams? No. Or at least they should be right side up. <laughs> so this one's focus. It's violating both of those. All right. So I'm fully aware. You're fully aware. Trash is certainly not the most important issue in our streams. Things like sedimentation, things like nutrient levels, uh, dramatic changes in flow. Those are the really challenging, really difficult issues uh, that our streams face. But I would argue to you that trash is a pretty clear index, a pretty clear indicator of how much we as a community value streams, which unfortunately is often not very much. And that really led to the, uh, the birth of the Scum River Navy. It's important to get on, on scale here, right? Do not think of the Navy like this. We have no aircraft carriers. We have no jets. I'm not really an admiral. I just claim that I am. Please don't tell the real Navy. Uh, this is why you should. This is how you should think of the Navy, and this is why we call it that because we have boats, at least in years when there's enough water in the stream to have boats. 2012 and 2013 were not happy memories for us. We had to go to a Plan B Navy, which involves no boats. But in any case, we have canoes and we have uh, volunteers, and a lot of what the goal of this activity uh, really is is provide students here at Iowa State with a hands-on, some might argue even more than hands, uh, feet, bodies, heads, everything, uh, experience with local streams. So, very quickly, a little bit of history of this activity. Uh, developed in 1998 as part of the service learning component of our biology learning component. So service learning really basically translates out to doing some community service 
but that is directly related to learning goals uh, that we have for our students in a particular course or a particular program. Uh, in our case, what we're doing for our students primarily, and I'll tell you in a moment, these are students who are incoming biology uh, majors here at Iowa State. Primarily, we're interested in engaging them and allowing them to experience some of our local biodiversity, perform some community service by removing trash, and we have this other goal, which is uh, a social goal, allowing these students to get to know other students who are in the biology uh, program and know some of the students in the program. So this is 1998. That bathtub right there, that's why the Navy crystallized in my brain. I was involved in the learning community. I was looking for an activity that would engage our students in this local uh, ecosystem and allow them to do something for the community. And I like to fish for smallmouth bass. This bathtub was upside down, half buried in sandbar, right by my favorite fishing hole. I walked by it for years, and I kept saying to myself, gosh, I could have a lot of just dug it. But it didn't fit in my backpack. And one day it dawned on young, strong people. That's how you do this done. Okay. So, uh, that first uh, expedition, uh, we went to that location. Uh, the students were absolutely convinced that if, if we were able to take the bathtub out, which I knew they were because they were young and strong, that, and they put it, we could do it and sink the canoe. You guys all know about canoes. Canoes can hold an amazing amount of stuff. It didn't come even anywhere near close to sinking the canoe, so we, we tried to dash. So what I want to do with my time today, in part, is give you a break between wonderful data that Jackie, spent, Jackie presented and some more wonderful data that will come afterwards. I'm going to show you pictures and tell you a story. And the, uh, uh, so think of this as sort of a, a day in the Navy uh, without getting that feeling, I guess. So first of all, we need to say something about partners. Any kind of activity like this is going to require partners. Uh, this particular individual here, Jim Holtz, is my colleague at Iowa State. Uh, he's the uh, biology, he's a biology advisor and the coordinator of our Student Services Center. And for most of the existence of the Navy, uh, he's been a, a, a compatriot in uh, uh, putting on this idea. But we've had lots of other partners. Uh, here's some of them right here. Uh, some of them are Iowa State partners, some are outside of Iowa State. Some have unfortunately been lost to river processes. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ames got flooded so many times they shut down. So they can't get cut right pieces for minutes. But in any case, we've had a lot of partners. <laughs> we need volunteers, of course. Uh, as I said, this activity was really designed for, developed for Iowa State biology majors, students entering into the uh, biology program here at Iowa State. But we're not very exclusive. Iowa State students and other majors can join us, Iowa State graduate students. I would say faculty and staff can join us. We do have an extensive screening procedure. We check for a pulse. <laughs> we have enough dead weight already. We don't need any more. Uh, but it's not just Iowa State folks. We also have citizens of Ames and citizens of Iowa who come help us, like this hardworking individual right here, uh, who is a, a citizen of Ames and a person who's quite interested in, in uh, rivers and paddling and so forth. So we have a lot of volunteers. In keeping with the naval theme, uh, we do have an officer corps. So we have undergraduate students who, yes, ladies and gentlemen, volunteered more than once. I will tell you the average student volunteers once. But there are some students who really like this and really get interested in it and volunteer multiple times. And so at some point, we promote them to captain and give them a hat that says SRN on it. And really what we're doing is kind of deputizing them to help us organize uh, the day. Uh, we also have admirals, of which I claim to be one. But basically, probably any of you can be an admiral. If you're not an Iowa State undergraduate student, and you came along with us and volunteered for a day on the Navy, you would come in at the rank of admiral. And you would receive a lovely little blue hat here. Uh, again, 
one of the concerns we have, of course, is you know, sort of safety. We've got to bring everybody back. The university gets very upset with me if I, if I don't bring back all the students that I took. So uh, we really appreciate the help from uh, you know, volunteers and uh, animals and cats. So, here's the Navy leaving porch. Some of you who know something about the United State campus may recognize that as Best Hall. Uh, they're in the fleet. Uh, we do uh, start out with doing a macro invertebrate inventory, just the, uh, the basic uh, level one inventory. Um, we use the Iowa Water uh, Protocol. So it's quite interesting. The Iowa Water uh, uh, Sampling Protocols, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, are not really designed to work in large groups, but we uh, sort of modify a little bit so we can do that and have large groups of students uh, going around looking for you know, a few good invertebrates, turning over rocks, looking at the logs, all that sort of stuff. And of course, we find some interesting things. Uh, so, crayfish here, uh, Dobson fly uh, larva. Uh, I think those are stone fly larvae in there, but it's the look on the face. <laughs> Here's one of the really cool things about this. Almost all of these students are from Iowa. 75% plus of Iowa State students grew up in Iowa. Almost none of them have ever seen these things living in their backyard. So it's really cool to get the students out. If you, if you, if you ask students beforehand what lives in the river, the answer is basically, oh, fish. And maybe beavers. Okay? But when they go out, they start seeing all of this incredible diversity that they can very easily find. They're really impressed with that. We, of course, also find some impressive birders. I uh, like this cute little guy here. And some of these guys, so a little fox snake and, and a little soft shell turtle there. Uh, and, of course, dead birders, too. <laughs> When I go talk to elementary school kids about our Scrimp River Navy activities, the most common question I get is, have you ever found any bodies? <laughs> and I always say, yes. And they go, ooh. <laughs> and I say, raccoons, deer, carp, all kinds of bodies. And of course we do. And of course these are biology students, at least mostly. And so they're very fascinated. And well, gee, what kind of animal did that bone come from? And maybe what bone is that? So, point one, I guess, is this is a great opportunity to engage our students in learning more about local biology. <coughs> and oh, by the way, and this is not an accident, the biology course that they're taking that semester while they volunteer for this focuses on biological diversity. So they're seeing out in the real world some of the very same kinds of things that they're studying uh, in, their, in their class. All right, after we do the biodiversity monitoring, uh, at least the formal part, the informal finding dead stuff continues for the entire day. Uh, then we start our, our trash patrol uh, down the river to find trash. Uh, I think I put this picture in to give you some scale, okay? So look downstream, a lot of heads. Average Skunk River Navy Day, we have about 100 volunteers. And I have to be sure they all come back. <laughs> So, so far we haven't lost them, which is good. But the point that I want to make to you here is we are able to get a lot of, a lot of students to participate. And you need to understand they're not getting credit in a class. They're not required to do this in any way. They are simply given the opportunity to choose to participate. Now, we get quite a few students to participate, and that means we can get quite a lot done. So, River Trash, as I'm guessing many of you are aware of, uh, is uh, where you find it. And often, you know, sort of one piece uh, at a time. Sometimes it takes quite a lot of work. It's not easy to pick out. As you can see here, I think that's in a barrel or something. Uh, sometimes you really have to think about things. Brain trust is required. So you might have conversations like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the brain trust comes in. No, we're not going to play with dynamite, okay? If we need dynamite, it's just going to stay there. Uh, teamwork, another great part. Is, remember, one of the goals is this, is this social interaction between incoming biology students to Iowa State. Uh, there are 
peer mentors and uh, repeat volunteers who are older students further along in the program. There's faculty members, there's staff members, and so forth. So working together as a team is a great way to accomplish that socialization. For those of you who can't tell what that is, that is a crushed livestock watering trough. This turns out to be an incredibly effective way of removing things, uh, a tow chain and a bunch of people. There are potential problems, however. If the metal is too soft, <laughs> the tow chain pulls through and everybody falls on their butt. Uh, we did get the livestock watering trough out. And it just took a, a, another, another effort. Uh, some of it's really a lot of work. It's heavy, it's hard. That is a 40 gallon water heater full of sand. <laughs> and because my wife, who knows me well, realizes I'm not the kind of person who should be trusted with a cutting torch, we had to take it with the sand in it. So it is good to have many hands. Lots of interesting trash. I'm sure many of you have seen things like this in your experiences and travels with rivers. Uh, we could have uh, fully outfitted uh, quite a number of apartments with, uh, you know, furniture, appliances, etc. Anyway, washing machine, <coughs> bicycle. There's another bathtub. Both of those bathtubs I've shown you the pictures of were. Uh, the old cast iron clawfoot bathtubs, pretty heavy. Supposedly they're worth a lot, but I don't think they're worth much with big holes in the bottom, which is uh, this one. Had a big hole. Extra credit if you know what that is. We'll just go on. You might smoke something. Uh, uh, lots and lots of tires, of course. That's you know, one of the more common pieces of trash. So, yeah, guys, students, uh, mining tires. There's a big uh, uh, bunch of tires sitting on a, you know, we have a picnic table here. And we've constructed with what we like to call a canoe moran. <laughs> Tied together. Tied two canoes together. It's amazing what you can put on that and uh, float downstream. Sometimes we need help uh, from local expertise. Uh, these were some uh, uh, metal girders that were part of an old, uh, old bridge. Uh, this is actually Jim Howe, who runs a, a welding service here uh, in town. And he actually came out, strapped his oxygen tank and the settling tank into a canoe and floated around so he had a sort of a mobile uh, cutting torch and we cut out all that stuff. Some of it's been there quite a while, of course. That is a 1962 uh, automobile plate. Back when I we used to uh, Identify counties not by name, but by county number. Uh, Story County was County 85. Uh, there's part of the car right there. We weren't able to get all of it out, but we got some of it out. Uh, lots of amazing trash and disgusting trash. You can probably guess what that is, but I'll make it explicit if you can't. Okay, that's a porta potty. Um, I wish I could tell you that's the only porta potty that we found in this country, but it's not. We found and carried out parts of several uh, of them. But I would argue to you that really that's pretty far up there in terms of saying trash. So, you know, just think of yourself tubing, for instance, on a nice summer day, floating downstream, and you come around the bend, and there it is. <coughs> Your experience has been changed dramatically. <laughs> All right. So at some point, we literally fill up our canoes. We get to the point where there's nothing else that's going to fit. And so I tell the students, okay, we need to continue uh, on downstream. And so, you know, that'll look something kind of like this. As we do that, there's that uh, the picnic table with tires on it again. Loaded boat. You can see we get a, a smorgasbord of trash here, tires, barrels, fence, uh, all kinds of stuff. Again, more opportunities for teamwork. Everybody's pushing, and of course, at the other end of the boat, uh, pulling. Um, these rivers, uh, as you all know, but they learn while they're doing this, do not have a constant depth. Okay? Some parts are deep, some parts are shallow. And pretty early in the day, the students realize that when you come to a bend, 
trying to drag your heavy canoe across the inside part of the bend, bad idea, okay? Because you just run into the sand. Stick to the outside and you've got enough water to, uh, to float. Uh, again, uh, that's what that looks like. At some point, I point out to the students when they get tired that it's all downhill from there. Eventually, at least one of them will realize, hey, wait a minute. Water always runs downhill. We've been going downhill all day. <laughs> and that's true. We yeah. have. Uh, so we get to the end, uh, and this is where things sometimes get a little ugly. We have, we have a couple of near mutinies. I haven't been hung. But this is where the students find out that, gee, it's great that you've got the trash here, but the trucks can only get to here. So that means that although we've got the trash downstream, we now have to offload it up where we can get the vehicles to help. And in this case, uh, I didn't point this out earlier, but I should say it here, that uh, the vehicles uh, provided by the Gaines Resource Recovery uh, Center. So this is where I tell them, okay, trash needs to come up. Uh, so the Navy's in port now, and we, what we usually do, that, that is a 30-yard uh, uh, dumpster provided by Ames Resource uh, Recovery. We form kind of a you know fire line basically, and just pass the trash uh, up to the uh, up to the top of the of the hill. At that point, we have a group of you know survivors that are very happy that they've survived. And we've got the, uh, the uh, canoes loaded back on the, on the canoe trailer. We then take the students uh, back to, to campus, and my long-suffering wife and some of her friends have spent the day baking cookies. They usually bake around 30 dozen cookies, which last around two minutes, as I can say, and sort of the average time. So the students sort of descend on the cookies, eat those, and, and then they and then they go, go on their way. So let me give you this kind of a, a summary, sort of overview of, of uh, uh, the uh, the uh, We've been doing this for 17 years. Uh, our activities are always in the fall. They're uh, right after fall semester starts, so Saturdays in September is the time frame that we do this. Water levels are typically low and safe, but not always. Uh, temperatures are typically warm, though not always. Uh, and um, that's the time of year when we, of course, have our new students entering the program, so that's the reason for the timing. Uh, we've been uh, uh, Submitting um, macro and uh, data to Iowa Water. Uh, All together, somewhere around 2,100 volunteer days. Now, I, that isn't exactly the same as volunteers, because some of the volunteers are repeat volunteers, but um, most of them are not. So the number of uh, individual people who have experiences is, is pretty significant. We had 47 uh, Stronger Navy trash patrols in those years, and with help from uh, the Resource Recovery Center, they weigh the trash that they haul out. Uh, we estimate about 72 tons of trash. And there's a couple things I should say about that. We haul it out on a Saturday. Ames Resource Recovery picks it up on a Monday or Tuesday. That may not seem important to you, but we're hauling out the wet way. They're giving us back, maybe not dry, but the drier weight. Okay, so this is this should definitely be regarded uh, as a as a minimum. Um, those of you who may be familiar with the Ames Resource Recovery Plant may know that uh, there's some recycling that takes place there. Uh, the city of Ames also generates electricity by mixing post-consumer trash with coal in a 25%, 75% ratio. So what happens to the trash that, that they get them to recycle anything they can, you know, uh, metals and so forth, and then anything that they can chop up and add to coal, uh, they use to generate uh, electricity and then the remainder, like all of the post-consumer trash in Ames goes to a uh, uh, landfill. Uh, some other things I'll point out to you. A number of years ago, we found uh, a recent fuel leak uh, in the Skunk River. So literally, we came around the bend in the river, and there was a fuel slick across the, the surface, that's the right look right there. <laughs> uh, so that turned out to be a city of Ames problem, which they, they fixed. And then even better, to give you that look, we found a sanitary sewer main break. Sanitary sewers, of course, have always struck me as being 
poorly named. <laughs> Maybe unsanitary sewers would be better. But in any case, this was this was unpleasant as well. Uh, and we reported that in the city of Ames did, did fix that as well. Um, uh, we received an award back in 2006. The thing I want to say something about here, we, we received an anonymous donation back in January 2011. And for us, a, a substantial amount of money, which we continue to convert into canoes and pizzas, uh, and little, little bits and pieces along the way. But there was a stipulation that some of the money had to be used to produce art from trash. So that may not look like art to you, but it turned into art. Uh, as a result of uh, this person's activities, Mike Stanley, uh, he's over in the ISU uh, Department of Art and Design. He took those black plastic things and made this sculpture that he calls Cider Free. Uh, my, actually, my brother, who has real world useful skills, unlike me, um, made this little sand for it. And if you want to see it, it's a real But, <coughs> most important accomplishment, it's not the pile of trash. It's this. It's the people. It's each person who's participating in this. Look at what they get out of this. This person, these are, the students write a little a reflection piece about their experience, and that's where these are coming from. I had thus just learned to identify the stone fly larva. Well, good. You should know that. You're the year of Their description looked like a science fiction monster. It causes a lot of this. Where did all this trash come from? And the answer, of course, is us. And you know, these are some of the student comments. All I can say is I can't look at porta bodies in the same light after we pulled that one from the river. Although this is the filthiest I've ever been, I truly had a wonderful time. I do it again in a heartbeat. Uh, I learned that the human population was much more wasteful than I had earlier anticipated. This is an important understanding. I learned just how much people litter and disrespect our rivers, but I also learned there's still hope. If we can get 120 people to come out at 9 a.m. on a Saturday and walk through a freezing river, I feel compelled to add that if it was freezing, there would have been ice. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't. Pushing <laughs> there's picking up trash, etc. So, I think, I know I don't have to try to convince you guys, uh, local streams, important part of our communities. Uh, and not just in the summer, they have some winter communities as well. So you know, maybe you really ought to take better care of it. So what questions do we have <laughs> before I turn things over to uh, our uh, session coordinator? Yes? So I missed the first part. Um, did you say how, how many miles you do an average? I didn't, but that's an excellent question. And the answer is, We've worked all together on about 30 miles, about 25 miles of the skunk and about five miles of Squaw Creek, which is a major tributary of the skunk. Basically, for those of you who know something about local geography, that's Story City down to I-35, where the skunk goes under I-35. On any given day, we only go about two or three miles. So we've, we've worked on all of that part of the river, but in any year, we'll do you know a couple of days, we'll do two or three miles here, two or three miles there, and then the next year we'll work on the <coughs> So some sections of the river we've worked on multiple times. That was my next question. So you've done some areas over and over. And so you might think, oh gosh, you're going to run out of trash. <laughs> nope. <laughs> there's a lot of legacy trash out there. And unfortunately, there's still stuff being thrown in. You know, mm -hmm. cans, bottles, microwave ovens, whatever. And Jim, you, I had asked, asked you uh, sort of about trash distribution. But it was interesting that you pointed out that oftentimes bridges Near bridges is where uh, you fire in the large okay, appliances. Okay, so bridges are great. If, if, if someone says you must go find trash in the river, that's where you should go first. Mm -hmm. Go to the go to the bridge, and you find these really interesting things like you know relatively large things, you know appliances. People have literally driven up in a vehicle, stopped, and pushed the appliance over the edge. It's completely <laughs> obvious. The last one I remember was a uh, it was a stacked washer dryer, you know, vertical uh, hmm. thing. And I guess it didn't work anymore, and they just pull up, whoop, right at the bottom of the bridge. So yeah, that's a really common place to find stuff. Yeah. I saw one or two of the slides uh, was like the big I was curious what what is the legacy like, that's with you. Yeah, that's a that's a, that, that's a great question, and, 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 and that and that has kind of changed a little bit. So that was an older picture. 
Um, we do allow children to go if they can, you know, sort of walk themselves, but only if there's a parent program. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of our past procedure. Unfortunately, Iowa State has become more concerned about liability, mm -hmm. and at this point in time, it, it's really difficult for us to take anybody who is not either an Iowa State student or 18 or older. So we had to stop. That. We used to work with Ames High School. We used to have Ames High School kids come with us sometimes. But because of liability concerns at the university, we're not allowed to do that. It's probably, I don't know. Yes? Do you advertise in some way um, locally so you get um, what you Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, there have been uh, notices in the Ames paper, the Ames uh, Tribune. Uh, discovery for paddlers usually uh, kind of promotes to the paddling community what days we're going to do trash pickups and so forth. Yeah. You recycle. What's that? You recycle. Personally or the, the Navy? The Navy. Okay, so the, so, so the Navy gives our trash to the Ames Resource Recovery Center. Uh -huh. And they take it all there just like any post-consumer trash. Anything that's recyclable, they take out. Mm -hmm. Anything that's burnable, they chop up and burn with coal and whatever's left goes to the landfill, just like any other post-consumer trash names. Then you you don't have any problems with recycling. I mean, if I was to ask you what's the most difficult thing to recycle, no. that's not your problem. Okay. That is not my problem. That is an excellent point, and that's why the, um, the, the Resource Recovery Center, for mm -hmm. us, has just been an absolutely essential partner. Mm -hmm. This whole project will be much more difficult, and frankly, I'm not sure if I can handle it on top of my actual job mm -hmm. uh, if, if I had to arrange for recycling. That's a good question. Yeah. Gentlemen, I know you said you've not lost anybody yet. But have you had, have you had anybody <laughs> I was kidding about that. Uh, <laughs> any serious injuries? Uh, we've been very fortunate. I mean, we, we, we don't let the students uh, use power tools if we take them. Uh, we are really cautious about picks and shovels and all that sort of stuff. We've been fortunate. We have had some cuts and some, uh, we had one, I guess, fairly significant cut where we ended up putting the student into a canoe keeping them out of the river, floating them down, and they had to have a couple of stitches. That was a, a person who was barefoot. Mm -hmm. That's not what I advise. Mm -hmm. Who, who uh, stepped on a piece of uh, sharp metal. And, and but we've been fortunate we haven't had any serious injuries. You know, this, these are significant issues. And one of the most difficult jobs that I have as a commanding admiral is deciding when the water level is too high to go. Uh, and, and it's just a really difficult choice. It's really hard to tell somebody. Yes, You didn't see any life vests. Well, you might have saw a couple life vests. Um, usually we don't take, we, we don't take the uh, PFDs at all. If the water level is higher than what we're comfortable with, we'll take, we'll take some. But we don't actually require students to, to use those. That's a good point. Those of you who are not familiar with this river, recognize it as a small river, and mostly the water is about a knee deep. But there are some deeper holes. It's true. Hmm. Other things. Anything else? Melissa, I think we're at least, yeah, at least on time, or maybe time. Thank you very much. Yeah.